guys, today we're here in East Texas at a lake in Dangerfield, Texas. This is about 140 miles from my door to here. And this lake is famous in fly fishing for chain pickerel. So that's what I've been catching today is a few chains. The problem right now is that the wind's about to blow me right off this lake. Um, it's a long drive for only a few hours of fishing, but uh, it was really calm at first. What you want to do is you want to use a fly, a five weight, six weight, nothing really heavy. And you want to use a fairly heavy leader though, because sometimes you get caught in these uh, lily pads, tons of lily pads. This place is pretty much hopping in the spring, summer with bass. I actually helped a guy catch the lake record here. I don't know if it's still up there or not, but anyway, I helped a guy catch the lake record about eight years ago. So your fly of choice for chain pickerel is a black and red seducer with weighted eyes try three different weights to, to get it down into their zone i started with a weightless just a bead chain it didn't work got a little deeper and started catching them so overcast day and coming and going i went ahead and went to the uh, black with the red head or red tackle what do you want to call it and then uh, of course if it's a if it's a real bright day you go to the white with the red red head on it and that's all you got to do with a nice good amount that's fairly good size this is uh, actually i'm running a new <laughs> i'm looking at my reel and rod i'm lucky to have this hardy this is a uh, seven weight one piece very nice very nice for this nice light action you don't need a whole lot of backbone with these guys you just need to be able to uh, to, to really strip fast so your two flies once again are um, black and red white and red seducer varying weights about a size four six hook something like that i will go ahead and tie it on a jig so it always runs hook up and you're going to get caught you're going to have to have a boat or, or a kayak and you're going to get caught on weeds quite a bit um, and branches so you got to be able to maneuver around stick your rod tip in there and, and dig those things out but uh, so far i've caught two i don't know if i'll be able to catch any more with this weather but uh, hang in there Thanks for watching, www.texasflycaster.com. Always, always go there. There's many, I think there's three or four more stories on chain pickerel at Dangerfield. You know, Texas is a big state, and so we have to drive to get to some things, but uh, it's got a lot of variety too. That's one great thing about such a big state. And so chain pickerel, East Texas, quite unique. Um, you know, I waited until the weather cooled off. It's first week of December right now. Today, I believe, is December 6th. And um, we're going to get back at it, man. Thanks for watching. Fish here. As you can see, these chains aren't just huge. They're little tiny guys, but they sure fight good for their size. So this is East Texas Chain Pickerel from Dangerfield. Caught on a black and red seducer. Man, they sure like to fight. Anyway, there you go, guys. That's a cool looking fish, isn't it? And where you're looking in here is on the, along the edges where there's grass. And then in some of these coves, if you can see a little place where maybe a channel comes through, that's where I caught that one. So the, And shade. You like shade a whole lot, too. So remember the shade. That's why this is kind of an early bite. And it kind of turns off in the middle of the day and it turns back on at the at the very end of the day. So keep that in mind too. Don't just take off if the weather's good. Take a break in the middle of the day and come back and do it again when the, uh, the sun gets a little lower and the shade gets out a little further. So guys, let me tell you one thing I do at this lake. This is the first time I've been here with my boat. When I, I kind of knew what I was going to do coming in. And that was... I was going to go ahead, instead of using a motor, just use a trolling motor. It's that small of a lake. So that's what I did, and now we're headed for home. And one thing you can do, it's a terrible boat ramp. I'm going to show this to you. When I say terrible, I mean it's uh, it's probably the original uh, CCA boat ramp. It's, uh, it's, it's in pretty bad shape. So you're going to get wet. So that's why I wear my waders, because I know I'm going to get wet just to, just to get my boat in. And uh, it's a real, uh, I'd call it treacherous and small boat ramp. So you're not going to get a big boat launched in this lake. That's just their whole intent, I think, is to keep from 
keep big boats off the lake and they're not going to improve a uh, boat ramp because that's the that's just the antithesis of what this lake is all about is boats so we're headed back <coughs> and one thing about that is one thing about that is that I can map this as I go along and also just kind of see for myself the depth of the lake very shallow lake in general but very nicely uh, grown in that's what I like about East Texas lakes most of them are a little older than the North Texas lakes and they uh, they have a lot of vegetation just already there because of their age so that's what this one has and watching contours on the bottom right now 57.8 degrees there's not a fish in sight and not any habitat not, nobody's put out any uh, it doesn't look like anybody's put out any kind of uh, crappie crappie structures or anything like that where I am exactly but this is not the deepest part of the lake but it was a productive part of the lake I caught more fish on this quadrant of the lake than any other and if you're standing up there at the uh, the park store that's on the out here on the point um, there it is right there so that's that it's that cove if you're looking out you look to the left and that's it so you can launch your kayaks right up there on the beach or anywhere you want paddle around here in about 10 minutes and you can be on these fish right back here in this cove I guess I caught about five or six between there and over there so very 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 productive and to me uh, this is pretty much an average day oh there's some structure looks like tree stumps pretty much an average day on Dangerfield and chain pickerel anywhere from I don't know six to fifteen fish is, is pretty dang good I've come out here and only caught one or two a couple of times uh, generally I think it has a lot to do with temperature that uh, it might have gotten too warm and that's why I didn't do so good so anyway we're gonna go try to get this boat out of the water and not just tear the hell out of the boat or the trailer or the <laughs> car it's uh, I'm gonna show you this ramp it's that that kind of crazy bad but hey I understand Hey guys, we're here in Dangerfield, Texas today, and as you saw earlier today, uh, this is what we do and how we do it when it comes to fly fishing for chain pickerel. It's a small impoundment here in East Texas. We're in the piney woods of East Texas, and I tell you what, if you got kids or family that wants to get out while you're fishing, this is the place to do it. Great playground, all kinds of facilities, very civilized, got a park store, um, got a fishing pier, paddle boats all kinds of great things. stand up paddle boards to rent out and things like that so guys east texas this little impoundment like i said earlier i don't know if it made it in the cut but like i was saying earlier this is a no wake lake that means that you can't power up your boat which means there's not a lot of there wasn't any boats on the water today but me there wasn't even any kayaks today it was just me i was the only person fishing on this entire lake today friday December 6, 2019. So, hopefully I got enough details in here. If you have any questions, let me know. www.texasflycaster.com And always, guys, always subscribe to the YouTube channel and make requests for things. I know I'm, I have to basically balance all the marbles myself and do all the video and all the fishing and all that stuff. But I'm glad to do it if somebody gives me an idea of what they want to see. Uh, I've done this place a few times over the years, and if you go to the Texas Flycaster website, you can definitely find some linkage to those stories and <laughs> the old videos when I was much younger, much, much younger. Thanks for watching. Have a great Christmas holiday. If I don't talk to you before then, have a happy new year, and we'll have some new stuff going. Things are looking a little bit better. Um, might have a whole ton of free time next year, so we'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching. Thank you.